In today's care guide, what we're going to be going over is the care for a baby leopard tortoise. So stick around. My name is Nick Pulaski. Growing up, I have always had a passion for wildlife. And with that passion, along with my passion of filmmaking, I get taken on some amazing adventures creating wildlife content. Getting up close with a variety of incredible animals. So come follow along as I pursue my goals of educating, inspiring, exploring, and conserving wildlife, all while having fun, seeing the beauty in our natural world. Hey, what is going on everybody? Thank you so much for joining me here today. So like I said before, we are going over, oh, we are getting up and we are moving around right now. We are super curious, but regardless, we are going over the care for these guys right here the baby leopard tortoise so leopard tortoises in general but I'm going to go over the care guide for babies now this care guide can be also used for leopard tortoise adults as well too it, to some extent there's going to be some differences I know in the past I did do and you can check the links above I did a care guide for the redfoot tortoise and redfoot tortoise babies and their enclosures and setups so you can definitely check that out if you're looking for how to set up a baby leopard tortoise I also did that as well too I'll leave links for that above and uh down below as well too so you guys can check that out but we are basically going to be going over basic overall care for a baby leopard tortoise just like this little guy right here tinley so we got this guy back at the tinley park expo back in march and as you can see he is doing super super well he is just a rambunctious little guy and i love him to death i have definitely gotten on the tortoise hitch that's for sure so let's begin the care guide because we have a lot of ground to cover the native habitat for the leopard tortoise is actually in the southern and eastern parts of Africa. So it ranges between the savannas, the brushlands, and the grasslands all throughout there. It's a widespread area that they're native to. And actually in the year 2000 is when they banned in the U.S. the importation of these guys as well as Salcata tortoises because of a tick that was coming in with these guys that was actually harming and causing disease to our livestock. So you can't get these guys imported anymore, but they are widely sought after and bred in the pet trade all around the state. So it is totally okay to own and breed these guys all throughout the states. There is a whole bunch of different captive high quality leopard tortoises all throughout. So if you decide after doing your research that a baby leopard tortoise is right for you, there are a whole bunch of quality specimens of leopard tortoises that you can choose from that are bred in the United States states here so no need to get these guys imported anyway but yeah so these guys do come from africa which is a hotter climate and stuff like that these guys do require a bare minimum temperature normally at night you want it to drop down to about the 70s and keep it at a bare minimum at the 70 degree mark for these guys and then you want the temperature to raise for the daytime temps in the 80s a basking spot between 95 and 100 so you want to make sure you have two different kinds of lights in there and like i said i go over all this also in the setup for baby leopard tortoises as well so definitely check that video out and I go more in depth about it but you want a hot spot between 95 and 100 degrees you want to make sure you have a basking light that does that as well as you want to make sure you're providing these guys with proper UVA UVB spectrum lighting as well so make sure you check out that video of the setup so you guys can go over that part if I put both these videos together we'd be talking about like a 40 minute video here so we didn't want to do that so yeah for those kind of temperatures that's ideally what you're looking for because they come from the grasslands of Africa and it is rather warm there so so you want to make sure that you're mimicking that the best you can. Now another huge, huge, huge thing that you want to think of when you're thinking about getting a tortoise species in general, or really a pet in general, I should say, is you want to be making sure that this is a good commitment for you because these guys, tortoises, turtles, anything really, are basically a lifelong commitment. So baby leopard tortoises, they look cute as babies, but they are going to grow into rather large animals. You're looking between like 10 to 18 inches on average. Some subspecies even get to 20 four inches and they range between 33 to 200 pounds so it's all a spectrum now as far as life expectancy goes you're going about 50 plus years sometimes even a hundred years if not a little bit more so 50 to 100 years think about that that's a lifelong commitment and you have to think about this too it's something that after you pass someone else is going to have to take care of too so these are all things that you're going to have to think about and I mean in my personal opinion I think it's great in terms of inspiring the next generation it's not necessarily trying to burden someone with your pets but really trying to inspire other people to really get involved with these guys because with the education with the hands-on approach to these guys that's how efforts go forward with conservation and making animal lovers and passionate animal lovers like myself and a whole bunch of other people as well too so definitely keep those things in mind that is a crucial crucial thing this isn't something you get with a little kid and then as they go off to college you're like well I have to just give this away and as parents you have to also be on board with these things and know that this is something that is a big time commitment 
no matter what species of tortoise, turtle, anything that you get. So definitely keep that in mind as well. Now, as far as handling these little guys, as you can see, Tinley is super, super active, really wanting to get out of my hands. He really wants to go, 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 go. So I'll kind of let him go right here. And I mean, not all of them are going to be super confident like Tinley is right here. Most of these guys, most of the time, all they want to do as babies is it's quite common for them to want to hide and uh, just kind of preserve themselves to themselves and just kind of keep them themselves because they are at this size and age really really vulnerable and that's just something for survival techniques because these guys do not have a developed shell that's hard or anything like that they aren't really well protected their shell is soft and we're going to kind of go into that in depth in a little bit here but anyway in terms of their shell being soft these guys make great great food sources for predators so, so you're looking at in the wild about 90 percent of individuals normally are picked off by predators and that's why some of these species of tortoise do lay larger clutches because these guys do get picked off rather easy because they're easy targets so these guys will stay more preserved they're going to be hiding most of the day they're just wanting to make sure that they are not going to be a quick meal for a predator so you're going to see these guys normally just kind of hiding and that's totally normal baby tortoise behavior no matter what you have and uh, as they get older as they notice you as the person that brings them food and stuff like that they are going to gain the confidence from that so always keep those things in mind be patient so you've owned the tortoise for three months you're still not seeing it i get it it's quite common i had that also happen with my baby redfoot tortoise when she was younger and uh it's just something that quite commonly happens i've had people message me believe it or not saying the same thing that they just got this tortoise and they don't get it it's not coming out and are they doing anything wrong it's something that's totally common for baby tortoises so don't worry about it not every single one of them is going to be as robunctious as Tinley is right here as he's trying to move and groove and uh, be a speedy little baby tortoise, that's for sure. And that's what these guys are. They're all-terrain vehicles that do want to go when they want to go. There are diurnal species as well too, so going back to the lighting aspect of things, you want to keep the bulbs on for about 12 to 10 hours a day depending on your light cycles and everything like that as well too, so definitely keep those things in mind. But yeah, as far as handling goes and everything like that, I mean, you do want to handle these guys periodically to make sure you're checking on their overall health uh, normally I do that during the soaking period but otherwise I don't necessarily pick these guys up and uh, handle them too much because I don't want to one stress them out or anything like that and as well too I mean there's no real need to kind of pick them up and move them unless if you need to and he is pooping all over me right now but <laughs> that is totally okay now, overall behavior and handleability they're super mellow and super nice animals once they get to know you and uh, equate you to being the food source for them but once you build that bond and relationship with your tortoise and it takes patience for sure but once you build that bond you're going to have a great lifetime animal that's for sure in a tortoise currently this guy is pooping on me so i'm going to clean him off really quick and we'll get back to the video we're back after that quick cleanup so now we're going to get into the diet aspect of things and these guys require a high fiber diet that's for sure so that diet is going to basically consist of about 70 percent of grasses and haze and then you're going to be 30 percent in terms of veggies and flowers and in terms of greens and stuff you're going to be looking at dark leafy greens that's for sure and just like i did for the redfoot tortoise i'm going to put a list of examples of things you can offer your tortoise to eat as well as things you should not offer your tortoise to eat and the do's and the don'ts so make sure you pay attention to that and that list is not set in stone there are a variety of different other things that are not making the list but that is overall what you're going to want to implement in your tortoise's diet. In those examples of diet too, you wanna to also make sure that you're giving them a varied diet. You don't wanna give them the continuous same thing over and over because one, they will get sick of it like you would if you ate the same thing over and over. You don't wanna do that for your tortoise as well. You wanna make sure that you give them a variety in their diet so it does not get stale to them, they don't lose interest, and it's not actually good for their overall health as well too. Now in terms of the grasses and the weeds to offer these guys, you wanna make sure that and I mean, you want to really, really make sure that you are getting them from like proper sources. I'm not talking like just pull them from any yard or anything like that, because that could lead to illnesses for these guys and possibly even kill them because you could be dealing with pesticides, herbicides, just anything out there that could be a toxin for these guys. You want to make sure you're getting your grasses and weeds from a good source. Clean all your veggies and everything like that as well too properly just to avoid any illnesses in these guys that is crucial i know for myself personally i've been raising up some wheatgrass 
that you can just trim up and I can just put that on top of the food and stuff like that. I've had no problems with that whatsoever. And it's something super easy to obtain. I mean, I got mine at a local pet store that sells it. Uh, you can get them really anywhere. I mean, you can get grass seed anywhere like that. And uh, just something as a recommendation, I would definitely recommend doing stuff like that before you just start picking up grass randomly in a yard. Really wanna make sure that you're confident that that grass is not covered in anything that could potentially harm these guys. And another thing that I do offer my tortoise species as well too is I also offer Missouri tortoise diet. Now that is something that I add as a supplemental food as well too, that I just kind of mix in with the veggies. And what I do because the pellets that it comes in come in super hard and there's no way that the chompers on this guy right here is going to break through that pellet. It's going to be very, very hard and it's gonna be something that they'll eventually give up on and be like, I'm just gonna go back to the greens. And some people just keep them on a greens diet. You don't have to offer them the Missouri as long as you give them the proper diet that they need or anything like that, but I just add it in as an extra bonus for these guys. But what I do is I just soak one pellet for these guys because at this age they don't need much. You can even probably do a half a pellet, honestly, too. But I soak one pellet in water, so they're also getting some moisture in their diet as well, too. I make sure of that. Um, but you want to make sure that you moisten one pellet. Once I see that the pellet is kind of spongy, that's when I will offer it to my tortoise. And that's when the tortoise will be able to easily take a bite of that pellet, no problems whatsoever. And it's just another added supplemental food for their diet. And yeah, like I said, I use it for my tortoises. It's not a sponsor, but I do love the Missouri tortoise diet. Now also what I do, and I showed this also in the care setup video, is I do offer my tortoise their food on a flat surface, a flat hard surface I should say. And the reason for that is it actually helps with their beak and trimming down their beak because they're, as they're biting, they're rubbing and scraping their beak against that plate. So it prevents their beak from overgrowing or anything like that. So I use like a clay saucer that you're gonna see right here. Basically that is going to be something that is perfect as they're chewing, like I said, they're gonna be trimming down their beak and you don't have anything to worry about about just doing those kind of things. Some people use like our flat rock slab. Anything is totally fine. You just have to find something that works for you. I think the clay saucers are abundant. They're cheap. You can find them for like 50 cents at a garden store or anything like that. And they make great bowls for food and really water as well too. Now in terms of water, you also wanna make sure that water is readily available for any species, that's for sure. I mean, though these guys come from drier climates, you still wanna make sure that they're offered water to soak in, offered water to drink. It's very important for a tortoise to have water available. If you guys aren't in the wild, it's great to just offer all their needs at once and just be done with it. They do require a shallow water bowl because these guys aren't that big. And if they do flip over or anything, God forbid, I mean, you don't want these guys to drown or anything like that. So just a little small shallow bowl of water will do like you see right here that I offer something super simple. I bought that at a pet reptile show. So you can get something as similar as that or even use another clay saucer. That is totally fine too. But you wanna offer them clean, fresh drinking water daily. Also, if your tortoise is being a picky eater, Missouri would be a great thing to add as a supplemental thing, like I said before. But another thing, I mean, it's going to be very rare for this species to turn down greens or anything like that. But if they do, another thing you could do to really help entice them and scent the food is blending and mixing, like wetting down the grasses and uh, wetting down the greens and blending them up a little bit into kind of like a paste. If you do something like that and then you offer it to them, you don't have to do that for long. It will entice them to start eating that kind of stuff before you can just offer it raw and be totally fine without blending it. If you guys do blend it up, it kind of gives a whole new array of scents and smells that are just all blended together. It really entices them. I've seen two, four picky eaters, but I've never heard or seen with this tortoise species any um, issues with them taking greens right off from day one. So just something if you guys need it, that's another tip I wanted to give you guys. Now another care requirement for the baby leopard tortoise is humidity. Now I know a lot of people freak about, about pyramiding and pyramiding can happen from a whole bunch of different things. So a lot of deficiencies. It could be from diet, it could be from supplementation, it could be from the lack of proper lighting for these guys. It could be from the humidity. And humidity for a baby leopard tortoise wants to be at 75%. So you really want to make sure you have an enclosed structure for these guys to really stay humid. I'm lucky enough that my enclosure that I have and the ambience of that room stays relatively warm and humid. So it's really good for these guys right here. But um, yeah, you really want to make sure that you're keeping that humidity level up for these guys. 
and uh, really making sure that they have a nice humid hide that they can go in and uh, stay in as well too because that is very important for these guys is the high humidity levels. Uh, as they grow older and develop the shell will harden and become a better structure and everything like that but you still want to lower the humidity levels as they get older but keep them at a proper um, percentage as well too. You don't want to lower them too much where it's completely dry in there but you want to make sure you're offering that humidity. And another good thing for these guys is to soak them. Some people do it daily. I do two to three times a week, normally three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. But you want to make sure that you're soaking these guys at a minimum three days a week I would say. And really all you do for that is you put them in a small dish of water. You want to monitor them during this time. You want to make sure that the water is warm but not too warm that could be hurting these guys and sometimes they actually go to the bathroom during this time or they'll go on your hand like they did in this video but basically you want to make sure that you give them the proper soaking time that they require that all helps with growth and development it's a great time to check them over too because after you soak them for 20 to 30 minutes i go with a very soft bristle toothbrush and i lightly go across the carapace and the plastron carapace is top plastron is bottom if you guys didn't know of the shell and basically what i do is i check for fungal infections or anything like that really make sure really look at the tortoise make sure everything is going good in terms of the development so I brush them and basically when I'm done I drop them in his food bowl and he eats greens immediately so they do enjoy it after a while they get used to it and they know that they're getting food afterwards so bath time can't be all bad if you're getting food afterwards right especially if you're a tortoise species and the last crucial big thing I want to go over for baby leopard tortoise care is supplementation so normally I supplement all of this stuff two to three times a week in terms of their diet normally for babies I offer food daily and they chow down and they're totally fine they're eating machines you don't want to offer them too much food and stuff like that our food is very rich and believe it or not if you speed up the growth of a tortoise and everything like that because of that rich food that can also lead to pyramiding and stuff like that too so there's just a lot of things there's all a balance really at the end of the day you really want to offer them a balance in terms of all their care requirements and stuff like that and you kind of get the picture of it as you go on if you do have any questions or anything like that definitely leave them down below too i'd be happy to help you any way that i can but yeah in terms of supplementation they do have a calcium rich diet but I do offer calcium d3 in their diet as well as I offer bee pollen a light dusting of that as well as a multivitamin and those are the three things that I basically use for these guys to develop and all throughout their life as well as a lot of my reptiles as well to require it so that is something that I do re uh, recommend that you guys do as well too as supplementation is crucial for any animal it's like us we need our vitamins and minerals and everything like that so why not give them to our animals too so they can grow and develop just like us so that is what I do and I offer that two to three times a week. The moral of my story right there is don't skimp out on the supplements because you definitely want to do that and normally you can get them in bulk and they will last you a good while so you want to make sure that you're supplementing these guys too and like I said in terms of the setup and everything like that here it is right here that I'm doing personally there are many different ways to do this and down the line I may even change it up a little bit from what I'm actually doing as well too but everything is going well in terms of my setup I have the humid hide I have the basking spot I have a gradient where they can go through and uh, determine where they want to be thermoregulating wise but it's all up to the tortoise and I'm giving him options so definitely recommend that definitely recommend you checking out that video too that's kind of like a part one or a part two whatever way you want to look at it it's all about researching that's the last thing I can recommend is don't just go off of my video go off of other people's videos too. go off of things that you read and uh, look into from professionals as well too that have been keeping the species for a long time there are a whole bunch of people out there and a whole bunch of outlets of information there's not one way to do this but there are very important things that you want to keep in mind when you're raising a baby leopard tortoise or really animal in general so definitely keep those things in mind but thank you guys so much for watching today's video like I said if you have any questions or if you have a baby leopard tortoise or a leopard tortoise in general or a tortoise species in general let me know down below I would love to know what you guys own and keep I am on a tortoise hook like I said I love these guys this is the second tortoise species that I've personally owned and I absolutely love them they give me a run for my money literally Tinley is running around right now and I love that about this guy right here. He is a great, great guy. So with that being said, definitely check me out on my social media. I post a lot about Tinley there as well as all my other animals. So definitely want to check out some updates. Check me out on my social media. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. If you could do me a couple favors, if you could like the video and subscribe to the channel, I would greatly appreciate it. As well as hit that notification bell so you know when my next video uploads. We normally upload on Mondays. So definitely stay tuned for that. Thank you guys so much again for watching. And until next time, we will see you guys soon. Thank <laughs> you.